In this tutorial, I'm going to cover three ways to get running totals within Python, more specifically Python pandas, by using the QMSUM function. This will allow us to take all the elements along a specified axis, in our case, columns of a data frame, and add these up with the preceding elements to give us a classic running total. Now, if you want to look into this more, you can go into the, the pandas documentation through the web address that you can see here. So pandas.pydata.org, and you can look at some of the more specific elements if you like. I'm just going to show some key features here or a brief outline of, of how this looks generically. As you can see here, we've got examples where a pandas series is created. So essentially almost like a column here, uh, and we can generate a data frame. And you can see how that looks when we start using the cum sum, short for cumulative sum, we can go through the values and add up the preceding elements. Likewise, when we use a data frame here and use the cum sum, you will see that two plus three is five and the second line plus one is six and so on. But you don't need to worry because I'm going to go through this in more depth, show you three ways doing this with a column in place, creating a new column to compare with our existing sales column. And then I'll also look at using missing or null values. So what we've got here is we're going to import some dependencies, classic pandas as PD and numpy as MP. And what I've done here is I've created a dictionary and I'm going to use this to create a data frame. So of course we have key value pairs, the key being, for example, sales data, and the values are the elements within the list. So essentially, we're going to be left with five results and our columns will be sales data, the product category from that sale, the product number, and the sale price, as you can see here. If you do want to copy this code, you can freeze the screen here uh, and copy this over, uh, and that way you're following along with the same data uh, as I've just created here, this, this mock data that I've put together. So you'll see we have a sales price for every sale date. We want to go ahead and actually be able to calculate this as a running total. So essentially adding 100 to 50 on the next line, so that would be 150 plus 120, 270, and so on. So the first way that you can do this, but it's not the most common way or, or not the way that I would suggest doing it, but it's important to highlight, is just to do this in place. So replace that sale price column with the cumulative sum, the running total. So we can access that within the data frame and we can simply set that equal to the cumulative sum and reprint the data frame. And you will see we now have a running total with essentially one line of code. And we pretty print the data frame just with DF instead of print DF. And that works. However, it's not the most realistic thing. You would likely want to go ahead and do this and compare it to the initial sale price column. So what I've done is I've just went ahead and rerun that initial data frame in my notebook. And I am using Google Colab. You can access it on the URL above. It saves some of the setup if you're not if you're new to Python notebooks. So what we can do now, we've rerun that data frame. We've reset everything essentially. Let's create a new column. So I'm going to access the data frame, use my brackets, and specify the name of the new column, which will be running sales total. And I'll set that equal to the sales price, but with the cumulative sum. So this is now going to create a new column, which is great. And as you can see now, we can compare this running total to the initial sale price. So I've got 150 on the second line. Naturally, we add the 120 on the third is 270. And we can start to compare how that sale price relates to the running sales total, potentially the percentage that it contributes to. And we could already do some decent analysis there. Now I'm going to create a new data frame. I'm essentially pasting the code and modifying it. So I'm calling this data frame two, but it's the same data. I'm just going to replace two values with NAN values from NumPy. Now we can use NumPy NAN values, which stand for not a number of values, to essentially just replicate missing data. And in our case, almost simulate sort of null values. So let's look at how we can showcase these cumulative results. Uh, with missing data. So we'll take the same code as before. We'll create a new running total column, but this time in our new data frame, data frame two that was edited. And we'll set this new column equal to the sales price, but with the cumulative sum or running total. And we'll print this just with the standard DF2. So what happens here 
even though there are any n values present, the inherent behavior without us specifying any additional parameters is just to essentially ignore those any n values. So let's look at now if we were to run this data frame two again and do this, but pass in skip any equal to false. What will happen now is any any n value will just completely delete that cumulative total and it won't run. Meaning that if there are any use cases where you don't want running total functionality due to missing values, you need to bear this in mind. So that was three ways to build a running total in Pandas. I hope you enjoyed it.